Have you ever wished you could be early on a project with huge potential where you could see upwards of 5x and 10x of your investment? Yeah, we all have that dream, but only a few actually get to do it. But today, you can join that few. I'm going to introduce you to something really special. On this channel, we're focused on crypto games, and this is indeed a crypto slash play to earn game, but it is its own universe of decentralized finance and gaming finance. Welcome to Asgard. We all know and love Norse mythology and you could even say it's overused in a lot of genres. But its popularity is also a huge selling point because when you build a system using popular culture that a large number of people already know and love, you instantly have a huge audience. That's what the development team have done really well with the world they have crafted here. They've well and truly embraced Norse mythology with this project, and you can see it when you look at their white paper. But before we look at their docs, I'll just read this brief explanation and introduction to Asgard posted by the Asgard official Twitter account. Midgard Online is an upcoming real-time Nordic-themed fantasy MMORPG, and for those who may not know what that means, it's short for Massively Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game. Being developed by the Asgard team, players will be able to fight monsters, run missions, explore dungeons, establish guilds, buy land, PvP, and much more. Asgard is the governance of Midgard Online and The Nine Realms, our ecosystem. Profits from Asgard investments and The Nine Realms projects reflect back to the stakeholders of Asgard. This is a first-of-a-kind ecosystem. Our ecosystem has a unique reputation system which rewards long-term Asgardians. This includes increasing compensation and better perks as time goes on. The Nine Realms ecosystem is the evolution of DeFi and GameFi. Don't miss out, join our Discord. Midgard Online is coming quarter 2, 2022. Midgardian Generation Alpha NFT will begin minting soon. The gates of Asgard are open. Start accruing favor. You will need it. And lastly here they say, Alpha for the readers. Midgard Online will be the first blockchain game to allow the use of NFTs from other projects in-game. Currently, Chicken NFT is being integrated into the game as mounts. Hashtag ride the cock. Ride your chicken across the realm of Midgard Online. This right here is the part I would say is what got me interested in digging deeper into this project. I'm super bullish on Chicken NFT and if you somehow haven't already heard about them, then just click the link above and it'll take you to my Chicken NFT playlist. Chicken is an amazing project, so definitely go check it out. Interoperability is still a big problem that needs to be solved in crypto with NFTs and especially NFTs in games. But while we're patiently waiting on a solution in that regard, Asgard has taken a big step to having pseudo interoperability. What they've done here is they've partnered with an NFT project to pretty much recreate every NFT in the collection in such a way that if you own this NFT, you can use the Midgard version of it within the game. And this is awesome. It's exciting that Chicken is not the only NFT partnership that will be built into Midgard. The team has stated that there will be more partnerships and integrations, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what other projects they can partner with to make their game richer and richer. The impact of these kind of integrations and collaborations is huge. I'll probably emphasize it more in a different video, but imagine you have 5,000 active Chicken NFT community members. 
With this integration, Asgard will manage to pull in the entire community into its own ecosystem because of the added utility of their chicken. Imagine this with other NFT communities and you can clearly see the huge potential in collaborations here. Vendin Machines is another upcoming and very promising project on Avalanche with a decently sized community. They already have plans to integrate with other metaverses or play to earn games. So imagine owning a vending machine NFT and with a collaboration between these two projects, your vending machine will have a replica in Midgard where players can spend the in-game currency to purchase items and as the owner of this machine, you get a portion of the sales. This is some very, very promising stuff right here. And that's what drew me into the Asgard project. But I became a believer in the project for a few more important reasons. First, and very important, especially considering recent events in crypto, one of the lead developers has been fully doxxed, meaning he has revealed his identity and is no longer anonymous. This is Mimir. G'day and kia ora, Asgardians. Nice to finally meet you. You should be seeing this video because in about eight hours, Vault will be launching. I'm here formally doxing myself on behalf of the Asgard team, representing the entire team and the as the one person responsible and liable should anything go wrong. Jericho Jones on our Discord server has my KYC information in the form of my license. Should anything go wrong, he is free to dispense this information to the entire community and further beyond. Now that the housekeeping is done, let's move on to the fun and exciting part of this video. This is a big confidence boost for investors in the project because that's how you know that should anything go wrong, if your money is stolen, you have someone to prosecute. So I really love this. Anonymous developers in crypto really needs to end, but I do understand why some even well-meaning developers prefer to remain anonymous, and that's a different topic. The second reason I'm really loving this project is that the tokenomics have been carefully crafted. I'm especially impressed with their wallet reputation system, which protects against unethical or unhealthy selling. I'm not gonna go through the entire documentation here, but throughout this video, I do wanna highlight the points that show the potential in this project to help you decide if it's a good investment for you. Of course, for anyone planning to join Asgard, I would highly recommend actually reading through this document. So, here's the first thing you need to know. Asgard utilizes mechanics to prevent exploitation of the protocol while properly incentivizing citizens to promote a healthy ecosystem. Asgardians pay a progressive tax that is incurred when you sell your vote tokens. The tax rate is based on your Asgardian citizenship tier. Asgardians will also incur a tax on all transfers of vote to prevent manipulation in the ecosystem. There is a 45% tax on all vault transfers between wallets. So, like I mentioned, the wallet reputation system is one of my favorite things about this project. But because people can always try to cheat the system, they put a high tax on transfers of their main currency, vault. So, you're basically losing half of your money if you decide to cheat the system. And this tax goes back into the system. You lose for trying to cheat, and the ecosystem gains those funds to use in keeping the system healthy. Asgard 1, bad actor 0. They go on to say, these taxes are in place to disincentivize malicious behavior in the ecosystem and to provide Odin's vault with the necessary funds to secure the health of the protocol. This is brilliant, but let's take a closer look. Asgard's main currency is Vault, and Vault is a rebase token. And if you're not familiar with rebase tokens, where have you been for the last three months? Well, 
They're basically tokens that generate a yield based on the pres preset rebase timer, which in this case is 8 hours. This system was introduced by Olympus and really made popular by Time Wonderland, and this rebase system is losing its popularity because of its unsustainability. Rebase tokens are not capped. This means they have no maximum supply and therefore they become inflationary, kind of like the US dollar. But as you can see, that doesn't make the US dollar unusable. And so if you print too much too soon, supply beats demand and you have charts like this. This is your typical rebase token chart. There is a lot more to say about how rebase tokens work, but I'm not gonna get into that here. I'm pointing to the inflationary aspect of it because this ties into how the entire ecosystem, aka the nine realms, works. The rebase model is a great way for new projects to raise funds and build their treasury. But what has killed almost all of them is the lack of utility of their token, as well as a lack of utilization of the treasury. These are problems that Asgard has built solutions for. Asgard plans to utilize the treasury, and when profits are earned, these profits will be redistributed to the citizens of Asgard. The citizens also get to vote on what Asgard does with the treasury and what it invests in. This solves the problem of an unused treasury, and also, by building a whole ecosystem of decentralized finance and game finance where Vault will be used, they are ensuring that Vault will always find use cases and there will be many opportunities for not just the developers but also the community to burn Vault just by interacting with the different parts of the realm. Going even further, in a recent AMA the team had, this question was raised about the sustainability of the project, especially for Vault as a rebase token. And to that, the developers answered that they will eventually move away from the rebase model, thereby putting a cap on the token and stopping emissions, and adopt a fully profit sharing and reflection model, and there will be no new Vault tokens created. But this is much, much further down the line because they are already controlling the rebase very conservatively and there is no immediate concern for inflation. Now, as you can see here in this photo, we're still in phase 1, with Asgard, Midgard and Muspel in development. But we can see in this little infographic the many use cases for Volt at the moment. Stake Volt to earn more Volt from rebases, Participate in governance as an AMP holder. Basically, when you stake Volt, you get AMP in return in an equal amount. You also need Volt to upgrade your citizenship, and your citizenship status is key to the Nine Realms. Volt also gets you early access to the game in the testing phase. The devs have stated that you will need both Volt and AVAX in order to partake in the upcoming NFT sales and Volt will also be used in the game to do things like craft special weapons or items, to mention a few. It's been said by the developers that Volt will be used for anything of massive importance in all the nine realms, and this includes guild creation and even land sales. And so, I'm also confident that they have a clear grasp of the importance of ensuring that their main token eventually becomes deflationary, and this is important for both gamers and investors. Now that I've given you reasons why I think this entire project looks solid, let's now talk about Midgard. What you're looking at here is a short gif of sort of a concept of the world you'll be roaming. Right above that, they show us the game that they reference for their art direction and style. And it's a pretty successful game, Octopath Traveler, developed by Square Enix. Personally, I think if what they make is even fairly close to this, then we'll be in for something great. Not much has been shared about Midgard at the moment, and so expect lots of follow-ups to this video as more info comes out. But what we do know, 
and what is of high urgency and importance right now is that the very first Midgardians will be available to mint soon. These are the Genesis Midgardian NFTs that can be used in the game when it launches. You've got both male and female Midgardians with different traits and properties that I believe will also have in-game utility. As all NFTs are, I expect these to range from common to unique as well. The urgency here lies in the fact that you need to be an Asgardian in order to be able to mint any of these NFTs. And here comes the first lovely use case for a reputation system. No matter how much money you have, if you have not gained citizenship status when it's time to mint, then you will not be allowed to mint. And that's just awesome. That rewards those who are good actors within the system and those who have been in the system long enough. So let's take a look at the reputation system. I think this is a brilliant system. I absolutely love it. To explain it quickly, everyone needs favor from Odin to upgrade their citizenship status. There are special tokens within the nine realms that cannot be traded, only earned and also cannot be transferred. These are favor, wrath, blessing, and gift. Focus here is on favor and wrath because they determine your citizenship status. Your status is equal to your favor minus your wrath. One important token which I haven't mentioned so far is mead. To do anything within Asgard, you must first buy 1000 mead and deposit in Thor's tavern. This is basically the price of entry to the Nine Realms. And so everyone needs mead for this purpose. In addition, mead will be heavily used within Midgard Online when it launches, along with another yet to be released token called Drachma. Drac will be the standard currency of Midgard. This means it will be earned in the game and will also be the token of our DEX, that is Decentralized Exchange, Yggdrasil, which is currently planned to be built into the game. Drac will be used for everyday trades and purchases in Midgard. It is the main currency used every day by Midgardians. It will also be used for traditional revives in town. Don't know what that means. We'll find out. Mead and Drac both share important jobs in the economy of Asgard. Drac will be earned through missions, jobs, tasks like farming, mining, etc. And is fundamental to the economy of, As of Midgard. So, back to reputation. There will be other ways to earn Odin's favor as the ecosystem progresses, but for now, the only way to gain favor is by staking or storing your vault into Odin's vault. At the time of making this video, everyone who has any amount of vault staked in Odin's vault will receive two favor at every rebase, that is every eight hours. And this is great that it does not depend on how much vault you have staked. It further goes to show you that the developers designed the system with the little guys in mind. So, you still have a decent amount of time to earn 100 favor and claim Asgardian status in order to be able to mint the Genesis Midgardian NFTs. But even if you don't intend to participate in the mint, it's a great idea to join in early and add your two cents to Odin's vault. You'll not only gain the rebase rewards, you'll also accumulate favor. And remember that your status doesn't apply only to the game. It will be used in all the nine realms, so it never hurts to stack up favor. Healthy selling and profit taking will not hurt your reputation a lot. The amount of wrath you gain from selling is dependent on the price impact. As seen in the table here, even a 1% price impact sale will earn you some wrath, regardless of your citizenship status. You should also know that you can certainly rank down and no longer be a citizen, so be careful and be reasonable with the sales. 
I hope I've been able to open your eyes to this project and explain why I believe it'll be hugely successful. In the end, the decision to invest lies with you, because I'm not a financial advisor. I'll leave all the necessary links down in the description. The official Asgard website, a link to my chicken NFT playlist, as well as a link to the video guide by the official Asgard YouTube where Mimir shows you step by step how to become a part of Asgard. I know this is a lot, and this may be my longest video breakdown yet, but honestly, there are aspects that I didn't even talk about. Expect more videos covering all of Asgard and especially Midgard Online when it finally launches. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on notifications. Until next time, stay safe and earn on gamers, you deserve it.